Hi there, I'm Stephen Chu, a professor of psychology. This is the second video in a series uh, on helping students to make the academic transition to college level work. In the first video, I talked about the importance of independent learning and how that can uh, pose a challenge uh, to a lot of students. In this video, I'm gonna talk about creating good habits to help you to meet the challenge of independent learning. So let's start by talking about what exactly a habit is. So a habit is basically a default routine that you carry out in a given context or a given situation. So you get up in the morning, you have a certain kind or you have a certain habit that you follow, a certain routine uh, that you follow. Maybe you have the same thing for, for breakfast uh, uh, every day. Uh, every time you have a context, you have habits associated with that context. So we all had a new context when the pandemic hit and we developed new habits. So some people took up bread baking, some people uh, took up gardening, uh, and the same was true with remote learning. Uh, when we went to remote learning, you developed habits about uh, attending your, your, your classes uh, remotely, for example. Now, habits are always associated uh, with a particular context. So when you're in that context, you carry out certain habits. Now, the good news is that we're going to be going back to uh, a more traditional academic context, or if you're uh, going to college the first time, you're going to be in a brand new context, and that gives you the opportunity to form new habits, okay? Good habits will always help you. Bad habits uh, are very resistant to change, and they can be really problematic. So the whole idea is to develop good habits from the very start uh, to help you and to resist developing bad habits. So as I, as I say, habits always form a new context to achieve desired goals. If you want to be successful in college, now you need to develop the habits to achieve those, those goals. When you develop a new habit, you basically start with a routine. Your routine should be easy, it should be repeated, and it should be rewarded. So um, one of the habits I'll be talking about is going to class. Uh, you should uh, make it a routine as to when you're gonna get up, when you intend to go to class, uh, you know, and uh, the whole routine of going to that, uh, each of your classes should be set. And if you follow that routine, you should reward yourself periodically for, uh, for following that, that routine. Now, if you do break, uh, if you do develop uh, bad habits, uh, then uh, you need to try and, and change that habit. Um, what the, the best way to change a bad habit is to disrupt the routine, make it intentional, uh, make it uh, really thoughtful instead of being the automatic bad habit that you have. So make it more difficult to, to carry out that, that habit and then work to replace it with, uh, with a better habit. But by far the easiest thing to do is develop good habits uh, right off the bat. Okay, so here's a list of, of good habits uh, for you to develop uh, in college. Number one is attending class. A lot of students may think, oh, well, you know, the first week of classes, uh, they're just going over the syllabus, so I don't have to uh, go to class, uh, you know, right away, and I can wait till maybe the second week. The problem there is you're developing the habit of not going to class. Uh, you're always developing habits by the things that you do, uh, and uh, you may develop a habit where you actually have to think about going to class, and your habit is, is not to go to class, uh, which uh, the research is quite clear uh, really undermines your likelihood of success. So develop the habit of, of, of attending class. That should be the default thing you, you do because your uh, class experience is by far the most valuable and, and valid source of information you're going to get uh, in, a, in a course. So uh, develop the habit of always going to, uh, to class. Make that your uh, routine. Make it like when you plan to leave for class, when you plan to arrive, that should all be part of your habit. Now, another habit is when you're in class, uh, you should take effective notes. Okay, so uh, that should be a routine for you. So there's been a lot uh, written about uh, good note taking. You find a lot uh, about it, but here are the, the basic uh, uh, properties of good notes. Number one, note taking is not dictation. The purpose of notes is not to write down everything that the professor uh, says. And, and it's a real temptation if you're taking notes by, by computer. Uh, don't take notes that are dictation. 
uh, what you need to do is to process what the, the professor is talking about or what the professor is, is presenting and uh, try and capture the, the, uh, the meaningful gist of what he's taught or he or she is talking about uh, and the key points. OK, so you should be uh, really thinking through what the presentation, uh, you know, what what's important in the presentation. So there are basically three functions of note taking. First of all, it should engage you in the class. Taking notes should help you to pay attention in class and to engage you uh, in, in class. Okay, secondly, uh, it helps you to process information deeply. By taking notes, you're thinking, am I understanding this? Are there questions that I have? Are there things that I'm not, not clear about? So deep processing uh, is a really important function of notes. It helps you to learn. And then the third is to write down information retrieval cues. You should write down enough context so that you can uh, remember what the professor talked about uh, before. So uh, especially if there's key information that the professor presents, obviously you need to write that down, uh, but you can't write down everything the professor uh, said. So you have to write down enough that you can recreate what the professor was talking about. So those are really important functions of note taking. And research has shown that when students take courses online, or if they have video lectures, they're less likely to take notes, which is, is um, uh, sort of self-defeating behavior. Uh, note, you should be taking notes on, on all your, your class materials to help you engage in that material and to process that, that material. Uh, just because it's recorded and you, look, you can look at it any time, doesn't mean that you, you should avoid taking notes. So uh, good note-taking habits is really, really critical. Now, there's different methods of taking notes. Uh, you can find uh, descriptions of different methods, some of them more visual, some of them are uh, more, more structured. Um, but you just need to develop a good note-taking uh, strategy for yourself, something that's flexible and adaptable, which allows you to uh, annotate your notes. Uh, you know, anything, any system, there, any system you want that's, that's uh, you know, you like is probably going to work out okay. But your notes should be metacognitive. Now, what I mean by that is that you should be monitoring your own level of understanding. You should be monitoring what the professor is talking about uh, as you take your notes. So, for example, if a professor gives you a definition, mark it as a definition. So that way you can locate it later when you're studying. Um, when I take notes, I tend to use this little arrow sign uh, whenever I think something is really critically important. So here's an important distinction. Here's an important uh, part of the concept. So you mark it down so that you can find it easily later. If there are things that you don't understand, you can put a big question mark. Uh, you can write down like find out about this. Uh, but, you know, use a question mark to indicate an area where you're not really clear about things. You can either check with the professor or check with your, your classmates uh, afterwards. And then examples are extremely important for, for learning. You should uh, think through the examples and they will really help you to uh, learn later. So it's a good idea to write down the examples so you can review them later and make sure that uh, you understand them. And then finally, notes are most useful when you review and organize notes after class. Uh, so uh, after class is over, review them, uh, make uh, annotations about things that you might have missed uh, or make uh, uh, mark questions that you need to find out about either from the professor uh, or the textbook or, or your classmates. So those are good note taking habits. Right. So you need to develop a study routine without distraction. You need to find times to uh, study and find ways to study without without uh, uh, distraction. A lot of students think that uh, studying basically is all about time. So it's about time management. Okay, developing enough time or creating enough time to study is the beginning. Uh, it's not the end of, of good studying. Uh, the quality of your study is just as important as the amount of time that you study. One of the things you're going for uh, when you study is something called desirable difficulty. Studying is effortful. Uh, but not all effort leads to learning. You need to make sure that the effort you put in uh, is going to result in good long-term learning. And that's that kind of learning is called desirable difficulty where it's effortful rehearsal or study of information. Uh, it may be slower uh, in, in the short run, but it actually leads to better long-term recall. Uh, and there's a number of ways of, of doing this. Uh, deep processing where you, you elaborate on information, you make connections uh, to other related concepts, you draw distinctions between one concept and another. 
Uh, then there's things called space practice, where you space out your study and you don't just uh, study the same subject the entire night. You actually move from one topic to another. Interleaving is kind of a related uh, idea where you uh, move from one topic to another, then back to the original topic to review what you learned. And then retrieval practice or self-testing is where uh, you close your notes and close your book and you, you practice uh, uh, you know, retrieving what you learned, or uh, you find uh, review questions and you practice uh, testing yourself over what you learn without uh, referring back to the material until it's over and then you check and see if you got it uh, right or not. Uh, I have a video that uh, will be listed at the very end of, of uh, the video series, uh, which helps to kind of go into more detail about, about these um, ways of achieving desirable difficulty. So this is effort that leads to uh, the best kind of learning, which is what you want to do. A lot of students uh, uh, use very poor and effective learning strategies. Uh, they put in the time, but they really don't learn. It's both time and quality of effort uh, that leads to, uh, to learning. You need uh, an effective assignment completion routine. Uh, so when you get an assignment, you need to get in the habit of writing on your calendar when that is due and give yourself a warning uh, when you need to, you know, uh, uh, make sure, you know, have that, that done or a week ahead of time so to make sure you get started. Uh, you need to uh, have a, a regular routine of like, I'm always going to start this, you know, uh, you know, five days in advance or right away, whatever it is best for you. And then what I always tell students is before you turn in a, uh, a paper or an assignment, read the assignment again, make sure you've got everything uh, included that, that you're required to do, because there's nothing more frustrating than getting points taken off because you forgot to include some part of that, uh, that assignment. Uh, an effective exam preparation routine. How far in advance are you going to start studying? Uh, you know, when will you have all of your notes reviewed and all of the material read? Uh, it's good to have that done actually a few days in advance because you learn more by review than you do uh, from learning it uh, just the, the first time. Okay, so a good exam preparation routine, uh, obtaining and using feedback to learn. So uh, any opportunity you have for feedback, like old exams or assignments uh, to test your uh, understanding of material, uh, learning activities in class, which uh, allow you to test your understanding. So really pay attention to when you get feedback about your level of understanding, and if that understanding is uh, at the right level expected by the professor. Then finally, regular sleep and exercise routines are really important for uh, your well-being. Uh, getting enough sleep, getting regular exercise are really uh, great ways of, of, of uh, helping you learn uh, and also helping you to control stress. Both sleep and exercise will help you with both learning and controlling stress. Okay, so those are uh, the habits that you should work on, on preparing. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to talk about becoming a self-regulated learner. Uh, thanks for your attention on this video, and I'll see you in the next video.